Hello everybody, it's Dr. Galvin with our next installment of our weight loss video series. And today's topic is hormones, and this is actually a pretty broad topic. It's fairly complicated, a little bit dense, and we're gonna be talking about a number of different hormones today. You know, hormones are molecules that signal the body to do different things, and they typically affect function. And we're gonna be talking about some hormones that affect metabolism and appetite, and also some sex hormones that affect body composition and um, body function. Now, we're gonna start with hormones that affect metabolism and appetite. And when we look at these things, you know, we do pretty extensive evaluations on folks here. And very often they start with doing a fairly complex set of lab work, probably far beyond what your regular doctor does. Some of these things really need to be looked at in terms of lab work, but we're gonna talk about um, a few of these things. Now, when we talk about metabolism and, and appetite, there are a couple very interesting hormones. One of them is called leptin, and this is a hormone that's produced by fat cells, and it's actually an interesting hormone. You know what it does? It lowers appetite and makes you burn fat. Sounds pretty awesome, huh? And you know they've actually tried to make a drug out of this hormone, and very interestingly, when they did it, guess what it didn't do? It didn't make people lose fat. And what they found was they, when they checked people that had obesity, guess what they found? They found that people that have obesity actually have very high levels of leptin, which is the opposite of what you'd think. And it turns out that people that are dealing with being obese or overweight actually are very resistant to this hormone. So they have high levels of leptin. And one of the things that intermittent fasting does is actually reset sensitivity to leptin. And it's something I didn't mention last week when we talked about intermittent fasting, but if you can make people more sensitive to leptin, then they start responding to it better and they start losing weight. And so that's one of the strategies we use here at the clinic is try to get people to be more sensitive to leptin. Another hormone that's produced by the gut is called ghrelin, and this is the hunger hormone. And ghrelin gets released prior to eating, and it makes us hungry. Um, and ghrelin, we think, is a hormone that makes people fail at their diets. And one of the reasons that restrictive diets don't work long term is because ghrelin keeps getting produced. And the more you restrict people from eating, the higher ghrelin gets, and people get hungrier and hungrier and hungrier. And so when we look at diets, which I always say is a four letter word, we really try to design lifestyles in ways that do not restrict so that we moderate leptin, I mean rather moderate ghrelin so that people are not ravenously hungry. We never want our patients to be hungry because that's a sure road to failure when it comes to weight loss. The other metabolism hormone that we're always talking about, and we've mentioned it several times during this series, is insulin. You know, and insulin is a storage hormone. It primarily is driven by glucose levels, in particular, simple carbohydrates. And what it does is it, it basically tells the cells to pull those, those glucose molecules into the cell. And if we're fully fed, it tells the cells to convert those glucose molecules to glyceride and eventually to triglycerides. Those triglycerides are put into the bloodstream. They're transported um, to the liver where they're converted, uh, or rather they're wrapped in cholesterol molecules and then stored in the transported to the liver where they're stored, um, uh, rather wrapped in cholesterol and then taken to fat and stored as, as adipose tissue. And you know, it's a storage hormone. And by keeping insulin sensitivity and insulin levels low, we can kind of reverse fat deposition and also drive people to start burning fat. And so those are sort of the primary metabolism driving hormones. And then there's another very important driver of metabolism and that's thyroid. And really there are multiple thyroid hormones. The, the primary one that's produced by your thyroid is T4 or thyroxine. Now T4 is really an inactive form of thyroid. It doesn't really have a lot of effect on metabolism, it's a storage form. It's gotta be converted to triiodothyronine or, or T3 to have an effect. And you know, when people talk about hypothyroidism, what are those symptoms typically? Well, typically it's fatigue, weight gain, people get cold easily, they're sluggish, they get brittle nails, their, their eyebrows start thinning out, their um, skin gets dry, um, they start losing their hair, their voice may get hoarse. They have high cholesterol, constipation, anxiety, depression, infertility, memory problems. And those are classic signs of hypothyroidism. And that's typically manifested 
by an elevation in a hormone called TSH, which is released by the brain. And that's how your doctor typically finds it. But what we find is very often we find people that have those symptoms and they go to their doctor and they're told, oh, you're absolutely fine. And their doctors never look at their free T3s. And we oftentimes people find people have what's called subclinical hypothyroidism, which is a suboptimal level of T3 with a normal TSH and T4. And those people have all the symptoms, but a normal TSH and T4. And what they need to be done have done is have those levels optimized. And there's a difference between normal and optimal, and you have to look at the right things. And there's some other little things, like some people have antithyroid antibodies and they can have Hashimoto's disease, or they may have reverse T3, which you can have a normal looking T3 level, but if you've got reverse T3, it's inactive. And so there's some nuances there and the right lab work needs to be to be checked. And those are things you really can't do on, their, on your own, but thyroid, problems can play a big role in weight gain. The other metabolism and immune function hormone is cortisol, and cortisol is a stress hormone. It's not really stress like, oh, I've got five things I need to do today and I've gotta be in three different places at once. It's really a physiologic stress hormone. I've got a polar bear chasing me and I've got a you know, fight or flight. And if your body feels like it's being chased by a polar bear, Losing weight is the last thing it's going to want to do. It's going to want to hold on to fat. And if you're not sleeping well, if you are stressed out, if you are not exercising or you're exercising too much, um, if you are burning the candle at both ends, eventually all those stressors can combine and your body can start perceiving day-to-day -day stress as this polar bear chase chasing you. And if you've got high, high levels of cortisol or very low levels of cortisol, it doesn't matter what you do, you're not gonna lose weight. And if you're in adrenal fatigue, that is a very complicated process, problem and that needs to be treated in some very particular ways and it's not really treated with medicine, although very often adrenal problems are very tightly related to thyroid problems and that's a complex problem and it needs to be treated in a very systematic fashion that most doctors really don't know what to do um, and that really needs to be to be treated in a very specific way. And if that's your problem, then we need to really work hard to, to fix that. Um, and then we've got sort of sex hormones. And you know, estrogen is, is kind of the classic example. When we're premenopausal, um, estrogen works to sort of help with um, sort of increasing peripheral adipose tissue to sort of support pregnancy and, and other things and minimize central adipose tissue and protect the heart against cardiovascular disease, protect the brain against degeneration and Alzheimer's and things like that, protect the bones against osteoporosis. But when we lose estrogen in menopause, the opposite happens. We start gaining central obesity, we lose the cardio protection, um, and we, we start developing obesity and, and problems related to estrogen. And so estrogen replacement and optimization can really play a role as we get older. And you'll see that women, as they hit menopause or perimenopause, they start getting central obesity and have a lot of problems. And so sometimes that loss of estrogen can really play a role. Um, increased estrogen um, when we're younger also decreases appetite and then you know, as that estrogen is lost, appetite can go up. Um, estrogen is produced by adipose tissue as well. And so in men, when, when, they're, when they gain weight, it can cause some, some problems as well. Testosterone in men can play a role also. Testosterone helps men and women both to increase lean mass and lose body fat. Excess adiposity or excess fat itself produces estrogen and especially in men estrogen has a negative effect and so it will drive estrogen levels even lower and so we really want to optimize estrogen lowering body fat and but you know women need a little bit of testosterone as well so optimizing those hormonal levels can really have a beneficial effect exercises rate Exercise raises testosterone levels in men and women and that can have an important effect we look at DHEA levels which is a precursor hormone to a lot of the, um, the steroid-related hormones. We also look at uh, growth hormone levels, IGF-1. All these hormones together, they, they, it's like a complex dance, and we've got to sort of balance all these things. Some of these things can be replaced and optimized 
by utilizing you know, replacement hormones, but a lot of them are optimized by lifestyle interventions. You know, nutrition, fitness, sleep, stress, those are, are kind of hallmarks of what we need to do. What we've learned from doing this from the last decade is that you, know, you don't make big changes by making big changes in one area. You make big changes by making small changes in multiple areas. And you know, those five cornerstones are the things that we do here at Vitality, nutrition, fitness, sleep, stress, and hormones. And by making small changes in all those areas and by you know, trying to give people certainty, clarity, and direction, we give people certainty by you know, doing these advanced evaluations, looking at the labs, looking at body composition, taking a deep dive into people's, you know, into their lifestyles, into their stressors, into their sleep, into all the things that sort of enter in to what's driving their kind of challenges. And then sitting down and, and explaining to them what all that stuff means, how it's impacting them, and then coming up with a plan that looks at all of these individual areas. That's how we achieve the success that we get. And so, you know, hopefully these videos are giving you a little bit of insight. Um, if you want more help, please contact us. We have, you know, inexpensive, you know, plans that just use an app that, you know, cost very little that, you know, you can just follow, you know, get nutritional plans, follow for, through an app. We have, you know, plans that you can actually interact with a health coach all the way to very, you know, very detailed plans utilizing extensive lab work where you work with me directly and, you know, we see every week and, and you know, we have a whole range of services that we offer here at Vitality. Hopefully these, um, these videos are helpful. We'll be offering a lot more content as time goes on. Please uh, contact us if you have questions. You can email us, you can contact us through the website. Please subscribe to our YouTube channel, follow us on Facebook, and we'll be back with more content as time goes on. Have a great day.